Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Sandra Black. I made a, a video approximately a month ago where I was conversating with police who were interfering and blocking my right to distribute literature. Um, I am allowing a sequence of slides to um, be in place of my face so that you guys can get information on my contact. Um, Ezra Batshem is my pen name. I am an author, a chemical engineer, and uh, I have absolutely nothing to do with the system as far as their um, jobs, their owning a house or a car or um, ownership or any of that. Um, what I am seeking to make happen is the awareness of the enslavement of mankind and th the attempt to annihilate and utterly destroy humanity other than a few people left to be slaves for the global elite. Um, what we're doing in this episode is following up on the original um, stopping by the police of my rights to hand out literature. I followed up on this with a um, call immediately, still not quite sure of... You know, have, have you ever been, like, violated and know that you're violated, but you can't put your finger on it because you don't know what just what just went down, what just happened, you know? So when I call the police, you can hear in my voice and the way that he talks to me exactly that I still do not know my right. And um, But this has a happy ending. You guys are going to be very happy in the end, so stay tuned with all of this. Um, if you uh, can, after you listen to the video, try to stop some of uh, and, and read some of the information. The Global Citizens Unite you see right now, that is our group where we're trying to get the globe to unite against um, corruption, against the global um, elite or globalization um, and the New World Order. Uh, and um, this is about the common law in the state of Indiana. Um, we have the common law in Michigan is already set up. We have the common law in Illinois that's pretty much already set up and it's blowing up like wildfire all over America, all over the United States, where the people are taking back the law for themselves. So... Um, if you get involved with the group, Global Elite, you will get plenty of information about the corruption, GMOs, chemtrails, fluoride in the water, the dumbing down of the human race, and uh, situations that are going on to destroy um, humanity. Where um, And th that's what has, has caused us to come to the position we're in now. But let's get to the police and my interaction with them. And um, the there you go. Was, is, um, I was out um, handing out literature uh -huh. okay, um, at the Walmart intersection. Okay. This same day, the veterans people were out. And, and I had planned a while back, just like they had planned a while back. Mm -hmm. Anyway... They called the police on me, the veterans people. The, the veterans they, did? Yes. Okay. Um, the police come out, and they ask me if I have a permit. We uh -huh. say I do not have a permit. And you, um, you, I'm sorry to interrupt. You do or do not? Did, you did or did not have a permit? I have a permit. Okay. 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 All right. So then they are asking me to leave. Okay. Okay. So then I asked them that um, I want to cooperate to follow the law, mm -hmm. but I, 
do not want to give up my rights. Okay. So I I asked the officer, is it against the law for me to be here? In other words, and I even explain it well, uh, because I understand the difference between asking me to leave and ordering me to leave. Mm -hmm. And they say, we, we're not ordering you to leave. Okay. I said, well, if you're not ordering me, then that means I can I can stay without being arrested because that's the only way that, you know, I want to exercise my right. So there were two issues that I had with these officers. Okay. The first issue is that, number one, I should have been instructed that it is against the law for me to be there, that I have to leave because of that for the way that they were treating me. And then number two, the second issue that I had was that, it, and you can hear the video, I recorded everything. Okay. They clearly felt, these officers felt that by me asking for my right meant that in their mind it was like, I, I think that they were, the, well, I'll just repeat exactly their words. Okay. Ma'am, you want to be arrested. You want to be arrested. What the crap? How do you get that? How do you get that I want to be arrested when I keep telling you what I want is my, to exercise my right? And I know there's a difference between asking me to do something and ordering me to do something. Mm -hmm. And I explained that to them very well. But they bullied me with, you don't have a permit. And I said, well, okay, by my not having a permit, that make it against the law. That they all we're saying is that you don't have a permit. And I'm explaining to them back and forth, you know. And I said, officer, I want to cooperate. All I want is my right. If I have no right to be here, I'm gone. I mean, if, if, I mean, if it's going to lead to an arrest, I'm going to obey that order because that means I'm being ordered. If okay. I'm being ordered, then I want to stay. And the bottom line is, you, you could hear the video, I never was to leave, but at the same time, I felt like I had to leave because um, after they were calling, they, they were going to call their supervisor, and, and actually pretty much what they were saying, they were going to try to get a right to arrest me. And, okay. But... I just, just, you don't have to get a right to arrest me. What you need to get is to know whether or not you have a right by law to make me leave. That's what we're trying to find out. Well, we're not going to do it that way. We've already told you to leave, so therefore, if you don't leave, when we get uh, from our superiors, we're just going to, you're, you're in danger of being arrested. Okay. And so... This is clearly showing intimidation and bullying, which the police do always. They don't care about our rights. And it's really sad. It's a very, very sad day when the police think if you ask for your right, may I see your warrant, sir? Um, I would rather stay if I don't have to leave. I'd rather exercise my right. In their mind, Clearly, if you watch the first video, you will see these police actually think that means you want to be arrested. They think that maybe you're trying to make a public statement, so you just want to be arrested. You know, this is a situation that is so very serious about people not standing up for their rights, because that's the reason why the right to share information in Marion, Indiana, was lost from a long, long, long time ago because people allowed it to be this way. And anyways, I'm going to let this continue. And so I don't understand why am I, you're not going to give me a warning when I'm trying to find my right here. I want to leave if it's not my right. Well, I'm just going to let you know right now you can't be arrested. Okay. So what would you like for me to do? Would you like for me to talk to uh, Sergeant Randall and Officer Jackson? Well, uh, uh, two things I would like for you to do. Okay. Number one, I would like for you, because really, I'm going to be honest with you, I still don't have a clue if they were supposed to just tell me you're being ordered to leave. Please leave. I know now 100%. 
It was my right by permit. I did not need a permit. It was my right by my constitutional right. Mm -hmm. I did not need a permit. And I will share our deputy chief stating it a fact. I never needed a permit. I don't know if that's what they messed up and did. I don't even know what they did. You see what I'm saying? Is that the situation or did I actually have a right by law to refuse? Because, you know, everything our officer tells you to do doesn't mean that we don't have a right to say, well, no, I'd rather not do that. Sure. Well, here's the thing. You, you have to have a permit through the chief's office anytime you're going to solicit for donations or to hand out literature, okay? Wrong. You do not need a permit. Literature, okay. Um, so that that's the one thing. You need a permit to do that. And if you're going to uh, impede the flow of traffic by handing out literature um, at the Walmart entrance or exit, then... By law, you need approval for the chief through the chief's office to do that by our ordinance, okay? Wrong. You do not need permission from the chief. This is not a police state, even though we are working hard at making it a police state instead of a country that is ran by the people for the people. So they, since you didn't have uh, approval from the chief's office, they could ask you to leave. But see, you're still saying the word ask, and and I, I understand the word ask. That's why I was wondering, but can they order me to leave? Well, well here's the thing. When an officer asks you to do something, lawfully ask you to, to leave. If you don't, then it's called refusal to aid an officer, and it is a, a misdemeanor charge, and you can be arrested for that, Okay. Okay. That's the point. If the officer lawfully asked you, and it was clear, please watch the first video on how our officers are trained that the least of their concern is the right of the citizens because they clearly weren't quite sure where the, the line was. Why not allow the citizen to practice what she was practicing until you figured out what was going on. Why prevent the right? Why strip the citizen of their right as they clearly did? It's because the first most important thing to them is to uphold whoever has the system behind them. And while we were out there, the veterans were there collecting money for the for the veterans. So therefore, by them being system, they would trump a citizen because citizens are not important in America. Okay. So are you saying that, okay, let me give you an example. And I know, Randall, you can look this up. This happened August 12, 2010. Randall told me, asked me to leave my own home where I was paying bills because my mom wanted to change the lock. She had dementia. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at. I know that was illegal. I paid bills there. She, that was an illegal eviction. My brother came and changed the locks. You see what I'm saying? So I don't. So. Well, that's a different situation. I'm not familiar with that situation, so I don't. I can't. I don't know anything about that. But in this situation, if you didn't have approval from the chief's office, then we would have the right to ask you to leave. And no, they do not have the right to ask you to leave. No, I did not need permission from the chief's office. And if you didn't leave, then you'd be disobeying our request, and you'd be, uh, you could be charged with refusal to aid an officer. Now, we never want to make an arrest in that situation. We want to ask for uh, common sense to prevail, and if an officer asks you to do something, we'd prefer that you just comply with that order, exactly. and it doesn't come to an arrest. Exactly. So I'm not asking you, like, if you're familiar with it. I'm just setting this. If this happens where an officer comes and supports an illegal eviction by asking the person to leave their own home. Mm -hmm. So that 
with what you just said, really by law, I should be arrested if I do not follow the illegal advice. So forget about Randall now. This is a hypothetical, but that did happen. It did happen just like that. You can ask him, he'll tell you it happened like that. Okay. And, but, so technically, I would have to obey an illegal eviction or I could be arrested. Well, here's the thing. If you are arrested for something that's illegal, then that's why they have civil remedies. You can you can sue the officer in the department if you uh, are illegally arrested. Okay. I would never advise to resist arrest, even if you think it's an improper arrest. That's why we have civil remedies for that. In other words, if if I if an officer is going to arrest me and I didn't think I did anything wrong, I would not resist arrest. I would comply with the officer's orders because at the end of the day, I can prevent present evidence to a judge or a jury of why I was illegally arrested, and that's why we have civil remedies. Uh, we have civil civil um, lawsuits. So I would never recommend resisting arrest. Well, no, I wasn't arrested. No, I know, but uh, you're, you're saying that you felt it was I, illegal, and I, I can't comment on it because I don't know the whole nature. I don't know the whole situation, just what you're telling me, mm -hmm. which there's always two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. But based on what you're telling me, you, you feel like it was an illegal eviction and that he was threatening you with arrest. Um, well, he didn't and, threaten me just like he didn't threaten me in this case. I've never, okay. I haven't at any time been threatened with an arrest. That's okay. what I'm just trying to understand. It's always been, um, I suggest you leave. Mm -hmm. you see? And so, but I suggest you leave. Sometimes. It's the same equivalent as if you don't leave, you're arrested. It no, so, sometimes we we ask for cooperation and ask somebody to leave, not because they're doing anything wrong or even the, that we can make them leave. We're just asking that to diffuse the situation and calm it down. And sometimes if we can get one party to leave a situation, uh, everything can be calmed down until... Uh, you know, clearer heads prevail. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, people are angry or upset. If they leave and, and are gone for a couple hours or a day, then they can make better decisions and aren't uh, so emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I kind of get an understanding. Um, okay. But in the case that with what happened to me, it would be against the rules for the police officer to say that he's ordering me to leave, he couldn't do that. In this situation, uh, at Walmart, he could order you to leave, yes. He could order you No. That's what I'm saying. He should have ordered me to leave. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what they need to be clear on that. Okay, I'll talk to him. Yeah, okay. Actually, yes, that's what the problem was. They had no right. So whatever to interfere with my freedom to um, of speech and to share with other people, and um, also it is not panhandling um, to share. Only way that panhandling comes into play is with the people who are begging and soliciting money. But as long as you're trying to share a point of view with another person, that is clearly open unless you are harassing the person. You cannot harass the person, of course. But um, freedom of speech is just that, freedom of speech. Um, what the problem is that we're facing is as we are transforming over to a police state, the police do not know, they literally do not know um, the rights of the people, number one, as in this case, and number two, and I'm not saying all of the rights, of course they, they know um, um, a lot, but as you can see in this case, they did not know our rights. So, and this is all because of the transformation of America, the United States, over to a police state. Um, and number two, the police are trained not to care about the rights. The police are trained 
that, okay. that they have a right to lie under certain um, circumstances. This is what our system has set up. Um, they are trained that their word is more important than the word of the people. You know, no matter that I have never been a criminal, convicted of a crime, and um, I'm an honest, law-abiding citizen, if I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the police officer in court that I didn't do it, and he's saying that I did do it, the nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, the police officer is always believed over the citizen. And that's not right, you see. And these are the situations that we have allowed to get out of control, that they have made laws even to make it where a police officer can lie. And, and it's acceptable. This is what we want the police officer to do. We made it to where when we train them um, that... They, they are always under a threat from the citizens. When, yes, there is um, some danger, you know, if you're pulling over a criminal without a shadow of a doubt, you pull over a crim criminal with a gun who's ready to, you know, do whatever he has to do to escape, there's danger there. But how many times is it by percentage when you encounter citizens, are we packing guns to kill, to get away from you, police officer? And I'm sure if they're honest, it's far more that we're not a threat. The citizens are not a threat than it is that citizens are a threat. And therefore, the way that the police are being trained is a serious problem in America. And we, the people, need to wake up. We need to wake up and realize that we need to unite, take back our um, police department and um, our police officers to work for the people, to serve and protect the people, not to um, work to see how many people you can lock up, give a ticket, force to get a permit, um, see how much you can make their day as miserable as you can. You see what I'm saying? Um, not saying that they shouldn't, you know, enforce speeding tickets or, you know, things for our safety, but I'm talking about the police officers who are under um, where they have to get a certain quota police officers who are not even listening to um, what the circumstances, you know, because they have to make that arrest. You have to, um, the person, they're not dealing with human beings. They're dealing with things that need to be railed in, reeled in, imprisoned, locked up, enforced, you see? And, um, this is their teaching. This is where um, all of their, their mindset is at. So then as citizens, we wonder, you know, why is it that, you know, I'm rushing to the hospital and my wife is about to deliver and um, here the gentleman is held at gunpoint for speeding to get his wife to the hospital and arrested the same day his baby is born, you know? This is just outrageous. And this is the mindset of these police officers because it's all about making an arrest, enforcing, and it's nothing about citizens' rights, um, what's being fair, what needs to be fair, you know, and I'm talking about the corrupt police when I'm um, sharing that part, when I say it's nothing about that. <coughs> and those police make the good police officers who actually do their job, who actually come out and want to see what's right to be done, 
um, to look for what's the citizens' rights, you know. It's so few of them who care about the rights of the citizens, you know. They more care about enforcing and arresting and taking charge over the people instead of what is fair to be done with the people. And that's the way we have trained our police to be. This is a problem that the people have created, you and I, because we sat back and let it be that, yes, that's their job. Get out there and arrest people, enforce, enforce, enforce. They're not human. But most of us don't realize that that's what we've done. So that um, was about um, the first, my first encounter um, with the police department immediately following my video. Um, After um, contacting my um, people with Common Law, um, I am connected with uh, Michigan and Illinois um, with a lot of information on our rights as people to um, to be free from the state owning us as slaves. I am a baby in this, uh, becoming a sovereign citizen, but I am actively working on that right now, and I want to um, help people to come together as well to get their freedom and to um, head up your states. If you uh, contact me on Facebook, um, all the information was on the video. Contact me on Facebook, Ezroth Botshem. I'm under my pen name, Ezroth Botshem. And you'll see Sandra Black there as well. And um, let's see. Um, Finally, I'm going to go ahead, though, and get to get down to the nitty gritty of I contacted the Marion Police Department and with the knowledge that I know, I know it's my right. And the fact that you have stripped the citizens of Marion of their right, I want to know what's going to be done about it. It took me quite some time to, you know, get the uh, chief, the deputy chief, to return my call. But he finally did, and and I'm very satisfied. And I'm going to tell you why. I am a bit um, different from wanting to, oh, hate the police. All the police is just out to get you. The police is this, the police is that. The police are nothing more than what we, the people, have allowed them to become. If we demand our rights as the people, they will want to give us our rights. If we give away our rights, they are going to be happy to take our rights. And that's what has happened in this case. You will hear the the deputy chief is going to say a long time ago our rights were taken. And they didn't even know at this point now that they had just taken our rights. Now it just had become a thing of, I'm going to use his exact words, the citizens have agreed to just uh, give us a common courtesy that um, they would call us first before doing this, you see. And then somehow, all of a sudden, it became law to our police department. And um, they all believed this was the law. So here, the, here, here he is um, explaining. And the great thing about this Um, One individual has um, returned the right of freedom of speech within the public to all the citizens because he also said that he sent out the information to all the police. Now, one thing I am kind of concerned about by them exercising that against the people all of these years 
they should really send it out in a notice that there is no need for a permit to speak in public or to share information in public. But um, here it is where he's saying, no, you do not need a permit. You are correct in that, in that respect. You are correct. Okay. I see what you're saying. All right, so I understand that it, the system is kind of straightened out that I did not need a permit that day. That is correct. There is no such permit. Like I said, people in the past, the former administration, long ago requested people call us as a, cur as a courtesy. So thank you very much. Um, subscribe. We're going to really start getting very serious about um, our rights knowing our rights and also um, enforcing change just by being the change as an individual. You see, uh, as long as we stand up for our rights, that's how we make the difference. I hope that you join me on Facebook. Join our group, Global Citizens Unite. And um, in Global Citizens Unite, Everybody has a voice. Um, you are totally free to express the corruptions or things that you, you see that needs to be changed. And um, we are trying to encourage each state. So if you're an individual that's tired of what's going on, you can come there and I will connect you with... Um, Different people from the state of Michigan, state of Illinois, where and here in Indiana as well, where you can get the information on how to free yourself from being a slave to the corporation of the United States of America and how to um, begin your own law for the people, by the people, by... Um, bringing together a general assembly of the people within your county and throughout your state. Thank you so much for um, your time. And um, till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.